Hello, today let's solve these four integrals in the general case. This is episode 3 of this topic, and I put the link for the episode 1 and episode 2 under this video. These four integrals were posted as a bonus question at the end of the episode 2. So let's solve them in this video, and let's get started. So let's look at this integral. Here, n takes integers and is greater or equals 2. So first, we set n equals 2. And record the result we derived in episode 1. In the last video, which is episode 2, we did the derivative on both sides. After simplifying it, we got this result. And the note for this green colored x is coming from the chain rule. So now, maybe you want to do another derivative. Then we got this answer for n equals 2. It seems very easy, but this answer is wrong. Let's see why this answer is wrong. First, we write the integrand function into this way by putting the cosine term to the right. And then we add b square and subtract b square on the numerator. So we can write this fraction into this form. And then we split it into two integrals. Record the result from the episode 1. So the second integral is convergent. But the first integral is divergent. So the original integral is divergent for n equals 2. Now let's analyze this integral by a simple method. And we will use this method to deal with the general case later. First, we take the integrand function here, and then we divide x square on both numerator and denominator. Now we let x to be sufficiently large. For example, here we set the capital R is 1 million times b. In this case, this term will be very close to 0, and we can ignore it. So the integrand function goes to here. And then we do the integration. So obviously it's divergent. So this integral is divergent for n equals 2. Now let's look at this general case. Again, we take the integrand function. And then we divide x square on both numerator and denominator. Now we let x to be sufficiently large and we can ignore this term. So the integral function goes to here. And then we do the integration. And the note for the power index is non-negative. So this integral is divergent. Therefore, this general case is divergent. Now let's look at this integral with a sine function. Again, we take the integral function here. And then we divide x square on both numerator and denominator. Now we let x to be sufficiently large. And we can ignore this term. So the integral function goes to here. And then we do the integration. And the note for the power index is greater or equal to 1. So this integral is divergent. Therefore, this general case is divergent. So far, we have shown these two integrals are divergent. And let's see the other two integrals, if they can give some good results. Again, we take the integrand function. And then we take the x square out of the parentheses. Now we let x to be sufficiently large and we can ignore this term. So the integral function goes to here. And then we do the integration. But note for this term, it's in the denominator, and the power index is greater or equal to 4. So this integral is convergent at infinity. But we are not done yet. 
because we still need to check if it's convergent when x goes to zero. So again, we take the integral function. But this time, we factor out the b squared term. And then we let x to be sufficiently small. For example, here we set the little r equals to 0 0.0001 times b. In this case, we can ignore this term. And we got here. And note for the numerator, when x goes to 0, the cosine function goes to 1. And then we do the integration. Because the power index is greater or equals 2, so this integral is divergent at 0. Therefore, this general case is divergent. And finally, let's look at this integral. Follow the same procedure. We can show it's convergent at infinity. So we only look at the case when x goes to 0. Again, we take the integral function. And then we factor out the b squared term. And next, we let x to be sufficiently small. So we can ignore this term. And the denominator goes to here. Next, we need to deal with the numerator. Recall the Maclaurin series for the sine function. And then we factor out the ax term. We know when x is sufficiently small, the first term will be the dominant term. So the numerator goes to here. And then we cancel out the x on the numerator and the denominator. And we do the integration. Because the power index is greater or equals 2, so the integral is divergent at 0. Therefore, this general case is divergent. So we have shown all the four cases are divergent. That's why in the last video, I said the answer is very simple, because all of them are divergent. In the last slide, I summarized the results from the three videos we did on this topic. And don't forget to subscribe my channel and give a like.